Hello everyone, welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more. Today's topic is denticure of cyst. So last class we had seen radicular cyst or periapical cyst. The second most common cyst after the radicular cyst is denticure of cyst. So let's see the details of denticure of cyst. Dentigerous cyst, the name itself gives an idea about uh, its origin that is dentigerous. Gerous means a germinal, so dental tooth forming cells associated with a cyst is known as dentigerous cyst. Exactly the enamel epithelium, we know reduced enamel epithelium which is the outermost covering when the tooth erupts into the oral cavity. So some malformation or some uh, improper reaction happening with the reduced enamel epithelium creating a cyst which is known as dentigerous cyst which is the second most common cyst after radicular or periapical cyst that is the odontogenic cyst it is also known as follicular cyst because it creates a follicles uh, follicle above the tooth crown so it is also known as a follicular cyst so usually these type of patients comes to the clinic with a swelling and an unerupted tooth so there is a swelling associated with unerupted tooth so you uh, might uh, keep a differential diagnosis of denticular cyst so that is a common symptom associated with this so we'll begin with there is a enclosure of part or all of the unerupted tooth in denticular cyst so a part or whole of the tooth just like this this is a whole of the tooth or part of tooth is enclosed by the cyst so there is fluid accumulation between the reduced enamel epithelium and the enamel surface of unerupted or impacted tooth so tooth is there so as the tooth erupts into the oral cavity this reduced enamel epithelium supposed to move away but what happens is there is some reaction happening fluid is getting accumulated between this tooth crown that is enamel and the reduced enamel epithelium and creating a cyst that is a fluid accumulation so it is basically from dental follicle moving on to the clinical features it is most commonly seen between first second and third decade there is no gender predilection it is commonly seen equally uh, distributed males and female are equally affected but it is most commonly mandibular areas are affected compared to maxilla 70% cases are reported in mandible compared to the maxilla where it is 30%. So the mandible, it is most commonly the ankle of mandible, then canine regions. So maxillary and mandibular canine regions are affected. After that, maxillary third molar area. So uh, the most common site is ankle of mandible and least common site is maxillary third molar area. It is usually a painless uh, condition or a painless cyst but it become painful when there is a secondary infection and it is a aggressive lesion it uh, grows in an aggressive nature there will be bone expansion and facial asymmetry because it is affecting uh, mostly the mandibular posterior region tooth remain unerupted that is the thing because it is uh, the cyst is over the tooth crown connecting the cemento enamel junctions or a part of tooth so tooth will be most of the time unerupted so how this happening pathogenesis so first there will be cystic changes in the remnants of enamel organ so it encloses the crown of an unerupted tooth which is attached to cemento enamel junction so what happens there is expansion of follicle when fluid collects or the space is created between the reduced enamel epithelium surrounding a developing tooth which degenerates so when erupting tooth compress the tooth follicle which obstruct venous outflow which induces serum to cross through the capillary walls and that is just the uh, process which is happening so it's a very simple process tooth erupts into the oral cavity so when a tooth erupts this reduced enamel epithelium should move away and the tooth erupts but what happens here here the tooth uh, with reduced enamel epithelium is not moving away there is collection of fluid is 
happening between this reduced enamel epithelium and the developing tooth. So there will be expansion of this follicle and fluid will be collected between this space and later cystic changes happening and it becomes a proper cyst. In radiographic features it will be just like any cyst a well defined radiolucent area it can be uni or multilocular uh, it covers entire crown of uninterrupted tooth and in radiographic way it expands three direction one is it can be circumferential or lateral or coronal so these three types of growth can happen or it can be seen in radiographic feature it is not easy to um, see these three ways of expansion in a clinical uh, setup so we need to make this uh, more clearer by using a radiograph in histologic features there is a cystic lining which is composed of reduced enamel epithelium and there will be occasional keratinization by metaplasia and inflammatory cells chronic inflammatory cells will be there if it is infected so that is about histologic features and we can do investigation uh, using uh, opg and ct scan iopa can be taken and uh, biopsy should be uh, taken to get a clear picture about this denticular cyst and treatment options we have enucleation masopialization or a combination of enucleation and masopialization and also a curettage associated with enucleation also can be performed in denticular cyst treatment modality so that's all about denticular or follicular cyst so let's uh, see the OKC that is odontogenic keratocyst in next session Thank you.